Well then, folks, uh, that was a thing uh, in a very uh, kind of mind-blowing way. Um, Shameful. Yeah, I think that's the accurate, uh, <laughs> the, the, the accurate word for it here. Uh, we're here to talk about episode four, Whoa. Land of the Dead. Um, man. Orko. Yeah. I didn't see that shit coming. That's the damn show. But it, with with as much of a backstory we got as to what his name was, we should have saw that coming. But see, that's what I felt about <laughs> last episode with uh, with Duncan's. Like it was a whole tribute episode to him, and you know now this episode they're in um, they're in Subternia, and yeah, Oracle, aka or Orco, or aka Oracle, uh, because he kept pronouncing it as a kid. I mean. He, he didn't like his name, so he was gonna get bullied. I mean, Oracle's a vile name. <laughs> just, just saying, but yeah, he just went out like a G. Uh, this was a, this is, a, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Um, but I, I don't know. I just wasn't expecting that. And not to mention, like he, he, we got a backstory uh, about, you know, his self esteem, uh, about you know, with his parents, uh, you know how. Uh, how much he loves Prince Adam. He doesn't even get to meet Prince Adam again, again, um, and then again with him being exiled and, and whatnot. Um, it's a lot for them to just kind of just say, yeah, I, I know that's pretty hard to hear, but by the way, we're, we're probably going to just kill him all too, just, you know, because if it already was going to keep a man while he's down. I, I, again, I just did not know what to think of that. And even him and Lynn had some laughs together and uh, they bonded. Bonded for sure, bonded for and sure. I love I love team ups. So considering <laughs> that we didn't we didn't really get to get them to do something together, uh, he's the last of his kind. Mm-hmm. That's I I don't know, and maybe I mean just maybe thinking down the line with the return of magic, there may be a way. But I right now I'm I'm blank. I don't I got nothing. Yeah, um, Orko has been the nanny has been the, the, the I'm thinking it's like we're giving like a a eulogy for yeah. this for this dude. You know? See that lets you know we saw a lot of his eyes when it comes to the the emotional connection which yeah. have with him. So that's a that was definitely a thing. Um but to move on from Orko, uh Tila had the swiftness when it came to her character development in a way that uh Captain Marvel should have gotten like be be done with it and within twenty five minutes. And be, <laughs> I don't want to see. The, I don't need to see a whole movie of you finding out you got this inner strength. You know. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, but yeah, Tila, Tila, she put on her granny, you know, her, her grown grown woman pants on, and and uh, she owned her power. She accepted everything, all the responsibility, like she should have. Mm-hmm. And this is when she became the true man at arms because she forged the sword from her own, you know, power. So. There was symbolism and message. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Scare Glow. Uh, first of all, um, the animation and everything with Scare Glow was just amazing. But uh, I- I'm sorry. I don't never want to hear Tony Todd's voice. Like, ever. Why? A lot of trauma in the cast. <laughs> 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 I may watch the next Candyman on mute. I'm not playing. Like, it just... It, it just... Yeah. That dude gives me the heebie-jeebies, man. You know, for oh. as old as he is, he still sounds like he did, you know, back in the day. And yeah. I and I'm saying that comparing him to Peter Cullen, yeah. comparing him to Kevin Conroy. You know what I mean? Like, if they were trying to do the voices of their classic characters, whether it be Optimus Prime or Batman, they sound old. Tony Todd sounded like. 1997 Tony Todd. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, what else, what's some other, uh, I mean, I guess the other, uh, what's the word I always like to use? Duality? Yeah, I guess that's right. So we went from hell and now we're going to heaven. So from um, Subternia to pre return Uh Where Prince kinda, Adam is there. Kind of weird. Yeah, does, does this does this speak towards the, the, what you were saying in the beginning about in where my, the story could go? In my mind, what I was thinking was that someone watched Black Panther. 
<laughs> I mean, why not? I mean, everybody did honestly. Right, the but money brought but in. think about it though. The land of Bast, you know, where the where, where the kings of the Black Panther, where the, where where the Black Panthers go when they pass on yeah. to the next the next stage or whatever, they were all there for T'Challa to see to counsel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Preternia happens to be a land of like ethereal magic. Yeah, you, you know, some place where you know, like golden trees of apples and all this yeah. other shit, and like if. Once again, if the trailers don't lie, because Marvel trailers lie, I can't. I continue to compare Marvel to this, but you know, from the trailers that we've seen, we've seen Hero, we've seen Adam, we've seen King Grayskull, and all in the same space. So that's probably what this episode five is all about. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and, and it, there's not a lot more I have for this episode because, uh, again, this episode is as you said like if you want to talk about an origin story this was the this was the theme of this series because in this one episode it completely tied to the name it could die it tied to the purpose um and it ultimately made it definitive who is your main character your main antagonist here the protagonist excuse me your pro who our main protagonist is the antagonist is questionable because we don't know but it is the journey or revelation of your protagonist that's Tila and the conversation between her and um and uh Scareglow clearly defined everything that we need to know about this character the psychology of this character um even the ideology going forward with this character was all done in 25 minutes in this episode so yeah it was exposition heavy yeah. there was a lot of talking yeah. um but it got it got across what it needed to, yeah. and for it to be the penultimate episode for this part of the season, it does leave off on a cliffhanger that I can say that I'm satisfied with Tila's story now, because damn, yeah. it just hit me. You needed you needed Tila to do what she needed to do in order to get the sword from from that that part of or that dimension, right? Yeah. Now it's up to Adam to realize what he needs to do in order to get the sword from that part of it. And with as quickly as they're moving in this story, we can see that this could probably be solved in this next episode for them to go full speed ahead from in the second part to bring magic back to Eternia. Yeah. I also think, I also think too, it also goes back to um, um, the conversation Tila had with um, Battle, Battle Cat. Uh, what's his name? Cringer. Cringer. About the idea of her relationship and her caring for Prince Adam and then we start to and even I say the last episode is that we start to allude to the fact that her biggest fears which in order for her in order for her to get one half of the sword she had to go see uh, she had, I keep on you want to bring up Marvel she had to go in order for her to get the soul gem she had to make a sacrifice <laughs> uh, but um we we had to see what her biggest fear was and I used to and I, and I started thinking like well her biggest fear had something to do with Adam and that's not the story that needed to be told here. It wasn't her fear of Adam. She did not need Ad Prince Adam as a crutch. He isn't the white knight here and all this other stuff. And we didn't need even the love interest aspect of this or whatever type of random swerve we could have got. It was truly her being able to identify, looking at herself, what her true purpose is and what her true power is. And for her to brace that. And she did it by the boom with some cool combat in there as well. And then now we're on to our final episode of the season. So I love it. This is probably my favorite episode because it, it gave me everything I needed. Good storytelling. Um, it focused on the theme of the series. Uh, good fighting. Um, the emotional toll from or or Orko. Orko. Um, and, and Orko came up to play. Kane, Kane damn to play. sure did. You know, damn like, sure did. He just needed this that kick in the pants to say yeah. that he can get it done. Hope I, I'm I'm not a really a fan of like people being revived, but God, I hope they do something. <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little in my feelings about that one. So, but yeah, folks, that'll do it for this review uh, for episode four. Obviously, the finale of the first half is going to be our next episode. Uh, definitely pour out your love, pour out a little bit for our boy Orko on this one, because uh, yeah, this this was definitely an emotional one. But yeah, we'll see you over for our final. Uh, review uh, on the episode following this. So drop in the comments, let us know your thoughts, and we'll see you over later.